All right, so this week, our lecture, this idea that we're sort of spinning off here is this idea of the metric system and scientific notation, and then also some metric conversions. Stay awake, stay awake, stay awake, stay awake, stay awake. I can watch, I can watch, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. Oh, it's so boring, it's so boring, it's so boring, it's so boring. No, 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 I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Stare at the screen, stare at the screen. <sighs> yep, still didn't fix my intro. It's the best I got so far. Hang in there. It's going to be better. Now, I have it kind of laid out into three little mini sections. Metric units, scientific notation, and then finally metric conversions once we get there. Your assessment is sort of linked to these three. So I'm going to dial this in, and I'm going to go relatively quickly because you can pause, start, go slower, faster, wherever you need to be, and rewatch this. And I don't want to sit there and waste your time. So first and foremost, let's talk metric units. When we talk about something in terms of size, we can talk about its dimensions. So a cube, for example, is something really easy for us to sort of visualize. We have a cube. Cubes can have mass. They can have volume. They can have length or height. And all of these things have values in terms of a unit. Now, things that you're usually used to talking about, um, for example, with mass, is we often talk about mass in pounds. How, much, how many pounds is it? How much can you bench? How much do you weigh? And then in volume, usually you guys will think of volume in terms of gallons. How much does it cost for a gallon of gas, for example, if you're driving cars? I guess we're not right now because we're in a pandemic, but you get the idea. And then length for us, we often talk about this as, you know, your height. So me, for example, I'm five foot, 10 inches. But none of these are metric units. However, they still have a relation to us because when we start talking about the metric version of all of these, these are what we know as essentially the standard, sorry, non-standard sort of UK and United, United States system. When we talk science and actually the rest of the world, we're going to talk in metric. And so if we're going to talk the mass of this object in metric, we're always going to talk about it in terms of grams. Volume, we'll talk liters. Length, we'll talk meters. Now, there's some other ones out there that you guys will come across as we sort of look at this chemistry class together. And so I'll throw them out there just so we can kind of take a look, make some sense. So for example, time, the metric system is going to be in seconds. So for duration, um, really beyond that for chemistry, it's not going to be too much more. Uh, your speed is usually a meter per second because it's a distance. So we're not going to talk miles per hour, but that's more physics. For us, we just want to have this idea, okay, grams is measuring a mass, liters is measuring a volume, and length is measuring in meters. So like when meters is a length measurement, or width or height, depending on what dimension we're looking at. Um, as you come across more of these, I'll sort of tie them in there for our metric version versus our non-standard version or the United States version of everything else. Okay, so for us, that's good enough. We want to be able to understand what a metric unit is showing us. Okay. Scientific notation. So when we have objects that are extremely small or extremely big, and I should say objects meaning numbers, it becomes really cumbersome or tiring to write something like 1,325,000 over and over again. There's an easier way to do this. And so we often do it in our head and say it, 1.3 million. Well, you kind of just did scientific notation when you said, hey, that's 1.3 million of something. Now, instead of saying the million part, really, if we're putting this in scientific notation, we're going to say this is 1.325 times 10 to the sixth. Now, here's how we do scientific notation going forward. With an object like this, 1,325,000, you always take scientific notation, and your first step is you're going to make the integer or the number between 1 and 10. So it's going to be something point something. You're not going to actually start at below 1, and you're not going to go above 10. So for this particular example, I take this, and I don't even care what this was. I'm just going to make this between 1 and 10 with these numbers. So I look at these commas, and I'm going to basically say, all right, this is 1.325. Well, now you just change the number because it's not 1,325,000 anymore. It's 1.325. But we're trying to tell the person, hey, 
we want the same number. We just want an easier way to keep track of it. So to have this representing 1 million something, you have to tell them with a factor of 10. So I always will say, now think backwards using 10. So what I mean by that is, how do I get this number back to that number? How do I actually make it show up? And so with a different color, I'm going to kind of show you how I would go about that. So I want this number, this 1.325, to be what I started. Well, then I would move my decimal one, two, three spots would take me to the five. But I don't want that. I want three zeros. Four, five, six. So now I know it's times 10 to the six, but is it negative six or positive six? Kids will get confused by this. And so I think the easiest way to, for you to remember it is just think a number line in math. Here's zero. To the left, going leftwards is negative. Going to the right is positive. So we went six spots to the right. So this entire thing, would change to what we already saw it to be as 1.325 times 10 to the 6. And now, if I had asked this in reverse, I could say, hey, 1.325 times 10 to the 6, what number is that? Well, you would just say, hey, that's a positive 6. So I'm going to move this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 spots, and then we end up, we have the 1,325,000. And so now we can sort of go back and forth between all of these. Okay, so let's try this one time doing a number that's very, very small. And if I go too fast, remember, you can always pause, go back to what we're looking at. So sometimes we have numbers that are constantly showing up and they're less than one. So 0 0.0035 shows up. And we're getting tired of writing this over and over again, so we're going to write it in scientific notation. So remember, our first step is we're going to make an integer between 1 and 10. And so I look at the digits I have. So I have 35, that's above 10. So 3.5 is between 1 and 10. But now I've changed the value. So I'm going to ask myself, how do I get it back to my original number? OK, so I'd start moving it. Let's use a different color. One spot that way. And by it, I mean the decimal. But that's not enough. I need two more zeros. OK, so two spots three spots, and that would be where the decimal actually is. So it'd be 0 0.0035. So I went one, two, three spots. So it's times 10 to the third. But now remember, we went to the negative direction. We went to the left. So it's not times 10 to the third, it's times 10 to the minus three. And so this number in scientific notation, we would just say is 3.5 times 10 to the negative three. And then we could have a unit on there as well. This takes some practice and getting used to, but it's not too crazy. It's really just keeping track of which way the zero goes, which is tying us into our very last thing. Since now we understand scientific notation, we can do metric conversions. So with metric conversions, you are essentially keeping track of tens because the metric system is based off of 10. And so if we always think of like things like grams, seconds, meters, liters, those are all what we call our base. And our base has no power of 10, okay? But then you may have heard of something like, hey, I ran a 5K before. Well, that stands for five kilometers. Or you may have heard like, well, yeah, I, I've heard my mass before and I'm something like 70 kilograms. Or maybe you've heard the term, you know, one meter is equal to 100 centimeters. All of these are converting in metric. And all of these are converting in powers of 10. Now, all of those powers that we talk about from this base is we can go on forever. Like we can really just keep naming stuff further and further. And I'm going to look at it from like the biggest of big to the smallest of small, but we're going to kind of keep it in a range. So our largest things that we'll see in class are kilos. And then after kilo, we've got something called hecta, which pretty much never shows up. You're not going to see it in chemistry. And then after that is deca, which again, you're really not going to see in chemistry. 
And then we've got our base, which has no essential value, and we get small. So if we're less than that value, we would go into the deci units, which again, don't show up so much in chemistry, but they are a placeholder. Centi, we will sometimes see if we're measuring in centimeters. And then the last one we see a lot is milli. And so kids will always say, well, how do I remember all this stuff? I think this is the easiest way. Kids hate deans because deans call mommy. Kids hate deans because deans call mommy. Now you may learn like King Henry something, something, whatever. I think this one really sticks with kids. And so now we have a way of converting back and forth. And it's just like scientific notation because it's positives or negative directions. For example, if we know that we want to go from kilos to milli, that's a series of jumps of powers of 10. Because kilos is 10 to the third, where milli is 10 to the minus three. Now that gets confusing for kids. So often, you're not going to see me write it this way. I'm going to talk more like, hey, I want to know if I have a 5K in kilometers, right? How many millimeters did I actually go? Now, if you're thinking, you should be like, okay, it's going to be a lot because millis are really, really small and kilos are really, really big. So what do we do to actually solve this? Well, we're going to use this system just to kind of keep track of our zeros. So I have five kilometers or kilometers. And I want to know how many millimeters is that? Well, I would move it one, two, three spots would get me to just meters, four, five, six. So what we just found out is that five kilometers is five times 10 to the six millimeters. Or you could write it all out if you really wanted to by adding zeros. And so we just say, okay, it's five, one, two, three, four, five, six, or five million millimeters. Now, if we went the other direction and I said something like, hey, I've got, I don't know, um, something is 14.2 centimeters. How many meters is that? And you look on here and you're like, oh, is meters the milli? No, 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 that's, that's your millimeters. Don't forget the base is where your meters, your grams, your liters, your seconds, the blank. It's the one that doesn't have anything to it. So if I'm going to blank meters, just meters, I'm going to the base. And so if I have 14.2 centimeters, I would go one, two spots to the left. So I'd move my decimal one, two spots. So 14.2 centimeters is just equal to 0.142 meters. Or you could say it's 14.2 times 10 to the minus two meters. But that's really not in scientific notation. So you'd have to fix that if you wanted to do it that way, which is why often I just tell kids, move the decimal around and write the number out. It usually works for us. Now, the remaining part of this stuff on here, you go through some practice of going back and forth between the different bases. If you go further up past kilo, there's actually a couple more spots and you can get to things called mega, and then you can eventually get to things called giga and tera, and that makes sense if we start looking at bytes or phone storage. When you get really small, you can go down to microns or micro. You can keep going and get into things called angstroms, or actually before angstroms, we'd have nano, but angstroms are the size of the bonds and atoms. We can keep going down further into pico, and then finally femto, and femto is the size of a nucleus. That's not super important for us. We want to be able to go back and forth mostly between kilo, centi, and milli. And then also the base, because the base is kind of how we'll take our data throughout the class. Okay, that's essentially what you're looking at. See what you guys 